Hello and welcome back to another episode. Now today I am returned, recharged and refreshed following a wonderful week away in Northern Ireland. And while I was away, something truly awesome was unleashed upon this world. I speak of course of the four part animated TV series on Netflix, Castlevania. Now this TV series is of course based upon the computer game series that have its origins in the 1980s, for example on the NES, and in particular it's, it's taking inspiration from uh, Castlevania 3, uh, Dracula's Curse, from around about 1990, with elements of lore and the art style pulled from uh, 1997's Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And I had no idea how much I wanted and needed this series in my life until I watched the whole thing last night. Which is quite easy to do. Each episode is only 25 minutes long and there are only four episodes. So it's one evening solid viewing, especially when it goes nice and dark. And in the summer, you know, you need to wait until later, later on. But it's worth it just to watch the whole thing in one go. Now there's no, not really going to be any spoilers for the series in this, in this uh, video. Although I will mention an element of Dracula's motivation. So there's, a, there's an element of a spoiler here, but it's from the very beginning of the first episode. So don't worry, don't worry too much. Um, of course, I saw the trailer when it was announced and I was excited. I was intrigued, I was interested, but I didn't know just how delicious, delightful and elegant this series would be. You see, if you've played, for example, Symphony of the Night uh, and, and Castlevania 3, which I have now, I actually only really started playing Castlevania uh, a few years ago when I downloaded uh, Symphony of the Night on the Xbox Live Arcade. Um, I was, you know, I was late to the party in that sense. Uh, if you have played those games, th that won't, for example, give you spoilers for the TV series, but rather it'll give you a proper appreciation of how the, the, the artists, the writers, and, and the creators, that, you know, the producers behind this series, have woven something new out of a very familiar uh, cloth, as it were. They've, they've taken Castlevania, they've taken elements of, of, of the broader, I suppose, Transylvanian lore, as it were, and created something which is very, very satisfying. And in doing so as well, they create a very sympathetic Dracula. That's one of the, down, the downsides, I suppose, of, of Castlevania as a computer game series, is that Dracula isn't the most sympathetic version that you that you see. You know, in, in the original Bram Stoker's Dracula uh, book, for example, he's quite sympathetic in terms of his original origins and his, and his motivations. And that's fleshed out, no pun intended, in the movie Bram Stoker's Dracula, for example, uh, in various interpretations, but also, most recently, I suppose, in Dracula Untold. Uh, we are aware of Dracula's tragic origins. But here, in the space of less than five minutes, the storytellers managed to create a Dracula who, for me at least, is probably one of the most sympathetic versions I've ever, I've ever seen. Uh, he, he isn't, for example, as tragically love forlorn as the Dracula from the classic stories, you know, gliding over oceans of time to find Wilhelmina, or whatever. Um, he's also not as, I suppose, as tragically duty-bound as the Dracula that we see in Dracula Untold, where, where, where the protagonist turns himself into a monster to protect his family and his, his country. Um, rather, this version of Dracula is, well, he's a man, oddly enough. Uh, he's just a man who is blown away. He's swept off his feet, strangely. Um, by, uh, by a woman, by a very intelligent woman, a determined woman, a woman who doesn't let him get away with with, um, with, with trying to be intimidating, uh, and a woman who just charms him. And uh, and in that sense, even though it's it's about five minutes worth of story, uh, what we have is, is a very strong sense that after 20 years, uh, clearly he was deeply in love. Uh, he goes away traveling the world as a man, walking, uh, as it were, from place to place, uh, on his wife's um, recommendation, uh, and he comes back to find that she has been burned at the stake. And so, from a moment of deeply sympathetic, quiet grief, Vlad Tepes literally explodes in a fireball of righteous vengeance and violence. Uh, he literally appears in flame above the pyre where his wife has just been executed and warns all present, every citizen, every priest, every bishop, that they have one year to get the hell out. 
They have one year to make peace with their God and to wipe clean, I think he says, the land of every mark of your existence uh, before he unleashes death. <laughs> uh, and from there, the story proceeds. Now, if that doesn't sound exciting and, and, and interesting, I don't know what does. The animation in this series is crisp, high quality and elegant. A very particular style of anime, uh, but also a style which, which suits the subject matter very well. I was particularly impressed, especially, for example, when it came to the violence, in so much as there was an anat anatomical uh, correctness to, <laughs> to some of the horrible things that you see that reinforces the violence. Uh, in, in some ways, the, drawing, the art style and the drawing here uh, really actually uh, it, it augments the shock value uh, in a way which I haven't really been shocked uh, as such since, for example, I saw uh, the Second Renaissance Part 2 in The Animatrix, uh, where you see bodies being pulled apart and experimented on, for example, by the machines. In this series, what we see, in, again, in particular in Episode 1, we see a, a violence enacted in such brutal realism so as to actually be strangely beautiful uh, and also actually so that you really feel the the, the vengeance you know you feel <laughs> you feel um the the repercussions of 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 what the people did to vlad's wife now, uh, beyond that, we do have other staples from the computer game series. The, ca the castle itself, for example, is such uh, an extraordinary architectural feat. Um, and it is exactly what I've always wanted to see. Uh, and, and indeed, it's one of the reasons why I love, for example, especially Symphony of the Night, is I love the idea of exploring such an impossible place. Uh, and and that, that impossible place is portrayed really well here. Uh, we also have other characters from the computer games realized in interesting ways. The Belmonts, for example, of course, are a staple of the Castlevania uh, computer games. They are usually the protagonist, you usually play as it were as a Belmont, and here we have a Belmont uh, portrayed in a way which, which grounds him. He's not, uh, he's not just a hero, he, is a, he, has a, he has a background, he has bad habits, for example he's a bit of a drunkard, he's a sarcastic, cynical type of person, but also goes on this adventure when he sees essentially a city in trouble. Uh, but again, I don't want to spoil uh, too much of this, um, so I'll just leave that there. There are also some really pleasing side characters and characterizations in this series. Uh, from, for example, the clergy burning uh, the wife of Vlad at the stake and their conversations, to some strange people, for example, inhabiting a pub in a, in a village. <laughs> and the fact that they have this really in-depth conversation uh, based around the fact that one man is not happy that another man has slept with a goat. They, uh, they, they, they give this series a sort of a crude um, uh, richness that really, you know, again, for an anime based on, or indeed any fit form, of, form of, of entertainment based on a, on a computer game series, is rare and it was very welcome. In fact, the first time I heard the goat, the goat conversation, I had to rewind uh, that conversation just to, just to make sure I'd heard what I'd heard because uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. It, it, it's, 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 it's a creative extension of the computer game series. And it's, it's, it, they, what they've done rather than, for example, in other cases where, for example, with the Super Mario Brothers movie, where they take very a very loose premise, dinosaurs because of Yoshi, and just expand on that until it doesn't really, you know, doesn't really resemble the original source material. Here, they 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 just they've just inhabited the Castlevania world with little characters who <laughs> who somewhat bring it to to some to a really a really grim, satisfying and quirky form of of, of realism. It's it's just it's just brilliant. Finally, bearing in mind that I don't want to spoil the story, I suppose it's just worth saying that this compares very favourably to, for example, other forms of Dracula uh, media, you know, other movies and, uh, and, and TV series that I've seen. It compares favourably to the books that I've read. Uh, it also compares favourably to other anime, for example, the Helsing series. Uh, this obviously isn't of the same tone, but it, it compares quite nicely. 
and it also compares favorably to the experience of having played Castlevania. It in no way be betrays that experience, it augments it. And that is, that's exactly what this sort of thing should do. It shouldn't be the Super Mario Brothers movie. It shouldn't be, even, even as some people quite like, the Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, those are those are, abs are abstractions from the source material. Where here, this is an augmentation. This is a this is a uh, an extension of the source material, and that's precisely uh, what it had to be. It's elegant, brutal, metal, and altogether well worth watching. So if you have Netflix, go and watch it. Give it a go. Support this series and hopefully it will go beyond season two. Apparently season two has been confirmed, it is on its way, it's been greenlit as they say, but uh, but I'd like to see this become possibly some, f I mean people always say you know the game of uh, Game of Thrones you know of Zelda or whatever, but uh, maybe not Game of Thrones, but I'd like to see this become, uh, become a, a complex body of work uh, because so far the, the, the animation style, the way that they've thought it out and um, and the characterization warrants, I think, uh, warrants something which is substantial. Anyway, guys, as I say, go and check it out. Uh, as ever, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.